If you're a parent in today's high-tech world, there are things you need to know about your children and their gadgets. Technology experts say today's parents need to take a hands-on approach when it comes to good digital parenting. Hello and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly and joining me is Stephen Balcom, the founder and CEO of the Family Online Safety Institute. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, an important topic. I know that you recently did a study dealing with a lot of parents and you said that out of that study came some good news and then there was some bad news. Right, so we found that three quarters of parents see that digital technology has a positive impact on their children's lives, their life skills, their future careers and so on. And a majority of them also felt that it was good for their creativity. But 44% said that it had a negative impact when it came to things like physical activity and their fitness. In other words, just simply going outside. Um, and 19% of parents admitted themselves that they had posted things that might eventually be embarrassing for their own children. So it's a mixed bag, mostly good news, but some stuff we still need to work on. Right. And when we talk about best practices, one of them is that you as a parent should be a good role model so that, that those 19 percent of parents who posted embarrassing items, not a good best practices. No. Um, so we developed something called the seven steps to good digital parenting. And uh, it begins with things like talk with your kids, use parental controls. Um, but it ends with be a good digital role model yourself. In other words, don't have phones at the dining room table or at the restaurant. Uh, put your laptops down when your kids come for a cuddle on the couch. Um, don't text and drive. I mean, put your phones away. Even if your kids are only two or three years old, they will pick up on what you do as opposed to what you say. Wow. In terms of privacy, how far do you think a parent can or should go when it comes to basically invading their child's privacy to make sure ultimately that they're safe because you know there are some fine lines that can be crossed because you don't want to know everything I can imagine as a parent. Right. We say friend and follow but don't stalk your children. Uh, so of course when they go onto Facebook, if they get onto Instagram, make sure that you're a friend and particularly for the younger teens, make sure you have their passwords. But don't stalk them. Don't try and figure out and, and read every text message, every uh, interchange, because first of all, it's pretty boring. Um, but <laughs> second of all, we do believe that, particularly as a teen grows older, they obviously have an increasing amount of privacy rights themselves. Um, so, yeah, it's a fine line, but I think parents can get it right. You told me about a father who cloned his daughter's phone so he could see every single thing that she was entering in the phone, he would see. 24-7, she was 17 years old, uh, he said it was there to protect her. I wonder about that, and I wonder if she, he's missing out on helping her to build resilience and, and her own techniques for dealing with cyber bullies and per, you know, maybe some predators or whatever, because within a year she's going to be gone to college. So no, that is not something we think of as best practice. Now, this, was there anything that was surprising to you? I mean, it's not so surprising that students aren't getting or young people aren't getting exercise. I mean, they're always on their gadgets. But was there anything that really stood out that you said, well, you know what, that's an interesting statistic there? 10% um, of our parents actually had been asked by their parents to take something down. So this was, <laughs> this was uh, really remarkable that as many as 10% were admitting that their own kids had already come to them to say, Mom, I don't want that photograph up on Facebook. So, yeah, I mean, I think that um, particularly with the new generation of parents coming through who have always anticipated using social media, it's, it, they grew up with it. So, of course, they're immediately going to put up the... Uh, the in utero pictures of their <laughs> unborn children <laughs> right. all the way through, but now the kids are starting to push back and saying, enough mom, put mm -hmm. it down. Because everyone's looking. Yeah. Now, in, in terms of having the conversation, how do you actually start a good communication process with your son or daughter who's been online since they've been literally three, four years old or some type of gadget, and right. now you're coming in and trying to put yourself in their space in that regard. So, so we say talk early and often. This is not like the birds and bees talk. This is something that is an ongoing conversation. Um, but we talk about three teachable moments. When they get their first phone, which by the way is getting younger and younger, probably around the age of 11. When they turn 13 and they are then eligible for social media sites like Facebook and Instagram. And at 16, when they can drive. Talk to them about not texting and driving. So it's an ongoing conversation, but don't miss those three teachable moments. 
My final question is, how are schools doing in engaging students in this way to make sure that they stay safe and, and that they know what to do and how to use social media? Because that always comes into the school system. Schools really struggle over this issue, not just with the technology they have in the classroom, but particularly the technology that kids bring into the school. Um, that's the, the more troublesome area because a teacher could be saying, all right, we're not using technology today, but the kids could have their cell phones under the desk. And they do. <laughs> and they do. Um, the other area that we are finding is that while kids are getting a lot of online safety messages, their parents aren't. So we like to work more, and we do work with a lot of local PTAs uh, and, and school organizations to give parents the, the seven steps and, and other ways in which they can help model their good digital behavior. All right, some good best practices that we can all take a little bit away from. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. All right, again, Stephen Balcom, thank you, and thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly.